If you're dealing with shoulder pain that's aggravated with repetitive movements like reaching overhead or behind your back and you go to the doctor, there's a good chance you're going to be diagnosed with something called shoulder bursitis. But the thing is, this is actually a pretty rare condition in isolation and often it's something else. So if you're given treatments of rest and ice, you're probably frustrated because the pain is still there. Welcome back everyone. Today, we're going to talk about shoulder bursitis and how it's almost always secondary to something else. My name is Dr. Zach Greenwood here at Performance Sport and Spine in Seattle, Washington. I'm going to show you what really is probably causing your pain, the best exercises to address it, and that surgery may help some, but for most of us, it's not needed. And that research really shows that conservative care and time is just as good as surgery. So don't rush off under the knife and do these exercises that we're going to show you. Reference, let's look at the model. So right now here we have the scapula or the shoulder blade. This bone right here is the clavicle or the collarbone. And then this big bone right here is the humerus or the big bone of your upper arm. And then the shoulder joint here is a ball and socket joint. And it's the most mobile joint in your entire body. And there's a labrum back here that kind of helped deepen the socket. These orange things right here are ligaments to help stabilize the shoulder. And then these around the ball are your rotator cuff tendons. And these muscles work in a conjunction to help dynamically stabilize the shoulder and keep it strong throughout the movements. Well, under these tendons or these orange things, there's these little cushions called bursa. And what these do is they help cushion and reduce friction between soft tissues like the tendon and hard tissues like the bone. But the thing is, these are designed to handle compression. They're very, very strong. So the first reason why this isn't probably bursitis is it's very hard to actually irritate the bursa because this very physiological function is to absorb compression. And for some reason, this diagnosis of bursitis is really prevalent in the medical profession. It seems like people really like to give that out. But the thing about that is now that we know that bursa is really tough to irritate, how often is it actually painful without other problems going on? And if you look at the MRI studies right here, it shows that true isolated bursitis, so when the bursa is irritated but nothing else is, it's only about 19% of the cases, so one out of five. But these other conditions like impingement, rotator cuff irritations, it's much more prevalent. So what I'm trying to get in this video is that true bursitis can happen some, but it's much more likely to be secondary to something else. When you have weakness in the rotator cuff and bad motor control, there's abnormal movement that can cause irritation on lots of structures. So it's not just the bursa. And the thing is, that's just the symptom. It's the pain. You've got to restore function, improve that strength, and improve that control with the exercises that we're going to show you to really under... Uh, commonly presents as anterior lateral shoulder pain, so kind of pain on the front and the outside of your shoulder. With true bursitis, the inflammation is always there. So if you have bursitis, the pain should be constant. It should be a dull and achy pain that gets very intense with compression. Ice often helps it, and the pain should be worse at night because inflammation often increases at nighttime. If it was truly the shoulder joint, there'd be associated stiffness, and it's usually worse in the morning. And then if it's the muscles or tendons, it's a different kind of pain that's often worse with loading. And if it's tendons, it often decreases a little bit as you warm up. And if you push too hard, you'll pay for it the next day. There are other conditions that can cause shoulder pain that also have a lots of range of motion, specifically arthritis and frozen shoulder. So we want you to do these movements to screen your shoulder to make sure you have full range of motion to make sure it's not something else. If it is something else, here's a link that will address that. So the first screen is raise your arm overhead or flexion. Can you do it to 180 degrees? Second is abduction or raise your arm laterally. Can you raise it up laterally over your head to 180 degrees? The next is external rotation. Can you rotate your arm backwards to 90 degrees approximately? And then internal rotation. Can you bring your arm down to about 60 to 70 degrees? If you can do all of these, it's very likely that you have something of this condition and you can proceed. If not, you need to find a different video to address your issues. Well, if it's not shoulder bursitis, you may be thinking, well, what is it? Well, it turns out that there's a bunch of structures in here in this subacromial space between this bone and your shoulder. And a lot of tests aren't that good at differentiating whether it's a muscle, a tendon, or something else. So the best name that we have currently is called subacromial pain. What it means is that something in here is irritated and these exercises are gonna both strengthen that tissue and control the shoulder to help get you out of pain and improve your function long. So subacromial pain is the best term to use up to date. Now we're gonna start the exercise rehab portion of this video. We're gonna give you level one, and then after that, progress to level two. We'll give you some options, but you will need to adjust this a little bit to your individual needs, tolerance, and pain. So if you need to reduce the range of motion or do less sets or take an extra day, make sure to customize this to your current condition. 
seated external rotation. So with your arm to the affected shoulder in a 90-90 position with a light weight or maybe no weight at all if you need to, you're gonna rotate to the shoulder, up to 90, pause, and then return slow and controlled. Make sure to feel tension in your shoulder and the back. Rotate through there, not your elbow. Again, slow and controlled. Maintain that 90 and adjust the weight to your current tolerance level and make sure to go all the way back. If you only find yourself at 70 degrees, make sure to get all the way to 90 eventually and then return to the starting position. You can also do this with a PT band. So same concept supplies, arm at 90, elbow at 90, rotate up, pause, and then return to the starting position. The band is great because it applies a little bit more tension as you go, so it's a different stimulus. So try both and then use the one that helps you the most, but make sure to get 90 and then return to the starting position. Table slide or wall slide. You're gonna have your hand on that same bench, pressing down lightly. You're gonna press down, raise forward, and then come back. Now for some people, it may start to get a little uncomfortable at some overhead position. So for a while, you may need to reduce the range of motion and then gradually progress over time. But the goal is to try to get your arm as high up overhead as possible, and you may need to lean down a little bit, but you wanna feel a good stretch in your lat and some nice tension in the back of your shoulder. Patient, so laying face down with your arm at 90-90 with the light weight or maybe no weight at all, we're gonna rotate through that shoulder, bring in your forearm parallel to the floor, and then return to the starting position. Try to keep the shoulder and the elbow at 90, and make sure to feel tension in your upper back and shoulder blade, not your low back. Some people may help to bend your knees and engage your core a little bit. So the motion is going through your shoulder. You're not arching your low back. Again, try to keep that 90-90 and make sure it's slow and controlled and get that full external rotation of 90 degrees and then return to the starting position. Prone shoulder elevation. Laying face down with the affected shoulder straight and the elbow extended, make a fist with your thumb Point your thumb up to the ceiling, return to the starting position. Again, you may need to bend your legs and squeeze your core, but make sure the tension's through your shoulder and not your low back. Try to raise your arm up as high as you can through the shoulder, pause, and then return to the starting position. Supine external and internal rotation. So laying on your back with your arm and elbow at 90. I want you to stabilize the front of your shoulder with the opposite arm. We're gonna drop the weight down to the ground, pause, and then return to the starting position. Again, if you need no weight at all, that's fine, or reduce your range of motion initially. But the goal is eventually to get all the way down to that full range of motion. And then the next one would be internal rotation, so bringing that arm down. Now this can be a little more precarious, so you may want to ease into it or start slower, but you want to keep that shoulder from rounding forward. So keep some pressure with the opposite arm, go down and back. We prefer you to do external for the full amount of sets and then internal, rather than going from one to the other so you can really control the movement. But again, it's slow and controlled down and then back. And once those sets are completed, down forward and back. Level two, the first exercise is the front raise to 90. So we're gonna raise up, stop before 90 degrees, and then come back down. Pick a light to medium weight and make sure it's slow and controlled. And keep your elbows straight and raise your arms straight out and forward. Pause and then return to the starting position. To progress over time, we're gonna raise all the way overhead, as we demonstrate here, with the same weight. For pressing, I want you to lay on your back with a light weight, and I want that elbow to your side. And then with our arm there, we're gonna press up towards the ceiling and come back to the starting position. I wanna make sure your arm keeps tucked in because that's gonna be the least challenging position initially. And then over time, you're gonna bring your arm out to a 45 degree angle, like we demonstrate here, and then press. And then the third level is to bring your arm up to 90 and press, but go as you can and gradually progress and don't rush this one. For the push-up progression, we're gonna to wanna to start with our hands and arms about the same height as our shoulders. And I want you to start pretty close to the wall. I want you to go down and then up. If that's easy enough, you can walk yourself back a little bit, but make sure you start gentle here and do a full session and see your body responds tomorrow before you progress. Once this becomes easy, you can do push-ups on your knees, as we demonstrate here, and then over time progress to full push-ups, as we demonstrate here. Banded wipers. So the band anchored in front of you and down, either a pulley or a PT band that we're using, we're gonna keep our core engaged and we're gonna rotate up and back. So you're thinking about like external rotation and then pulling your arm back towards the wall. 
and you want to keep it kind of far from your body. Don't go here or go straight out, but keep your elbow a little bent like we show you and really work on going through the shoulder. Don't arch your back. So keep the core and glutes engaged and pull through the shoulder. Rotated shoulder press. So in a seated position with a light weight, with the weight in the palm facing you, we're gonna press and rotate overhead and then come back. Make sure to not arch your back and press up and overhead, pause, and then return to the starting position. So from the side, it should look like this. Make sure to get all the way back and not go forward or go back too far. Go from here, straight up, and don't arch your back at all. Side laying arm raise. So laying on your side, if this is the shoulder we're gonna exercise, we're gonna bring it all the way overhead, pause, and then return to the starting position. Now, as you break 90, gravity kind of pulls you down harder. So you may find that you only wanna do partial range of motion initially, and then over the subsequent sessions, you can work on going farther and farther. But again, address it to your current symptoms and then gradually get to overhead, pause, and then return to the starting position. Lateral raise, the light dumbbell standing up with your elbow fully straight. We're gonna raise it up at a 45 to 90 and then down. So from the side view, it's gonna look like this. Try to make it slow and controlled and make sure you're going out at a 45 and not straight out to the side. Over time, you're gonna to wanna to raise that arm all the way overhead. When is imaging needed for shoulder problems? So first, x-rays should be considered when there's pain and trauma throughout things like fractures, dislocations, and arthritis. MRIs are best for suspected soft tissue injuries like rotator cuff tears, labor and pathology, especially if it hasn't been helped with conservative care after six weeks. Ultrasounds can assess rotator cuff integrity and guided injections. CT scans are best for complex fractures or pre-surgical planning. And then MRI with injection is preferred for labor tears and instability. Lastly, we wanna talk about surgery, and this is really important. So I don't want you to take away that you never should have surgery. What I should take away is that surgery should be your last option and only after conservative care. And I want you to know what you should expect with surgery and what you shouldn't. So we looked at this randomized controlled trial and out of 190 people, they got split into two groups. One had conservative treatment and one had surgery. After two year follow-up, so after two years of surgery, the groups are identical, both in pain and function. When you think about the average surgery is $6,000 to $22,000 and the rehab can be three months, you definitely wanna to rush to surgery. You wanna make sure you've had high value rehab first before you have surgery. What I mean by high value, what I mean by high value care is not just rest, ice, and some generic band exercises that you could find on the internet in two seconds. It's about finding the right exercises and tailoring to your current condition and then progressing and managing as your symptoms and tolerance allow. Again, high value rehab is much different than just generic baseline stuff. The last thing I wanna talk about is this CSTOS study from 2018. So this study had three groups. The red line is the arthroscopic group, so the group that had the full surgery. The blue line is the decompression where they just took out the bursa and then the green line was a control group. So there's no treatment. And as you see over the progression of six to 12 months, there really isn't that much change. So sometimes just time is what's helpful. And what I want to bring to your attention with this study is that sometimes treatments are added for effect when really things just get better with time. So again, surgery should be used for some people, but don't rush into it. And it definitely isn't your first choice. So in summary, Shoulder bursitis is a real thing, but it's highly overdiagnosed, and you're probably not dealing with just bursitis, but other things. So if you're gonna tr treat it with just ice and rest, you're gonna be frustrated. Do these exercises and strengthen your shoulder, you're gonna be happy and for a long time. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our channel, and then we have a bunch of other great videos that you can explore.